Hi, this is chapter 2 of the first SORUS tutorial and this continues from the first section where we covered, in, covered the logging in process and getting to the dashboard on SORUS. This chapter will deal with my account and the messaging system before we deal with creating cases. On the dashboard there are two links above on the top right my account and messages besides log out. These two options uh, control your username and password and your link to your profile and messages is a private messaging system where you can message instantly case officers or other users on SARS. My account is where you'll set your profile. This user is a demo user and I've already created two profiles for this particular username um, and that is not normal. Um, normally you would only want to see one profile um, so that the system reads uh, one link to the username and um, this if you see one of two please report this to your relevant case officer who will then scrub the duplicate profile. Um, a lot of this happens because much of the material we've brought from the archives has brought in usernames twice um, under profiles and there is not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship between archive people and users of SARS. So we need for instance to reference people who are long dead in the site recordings or the object management and they will never become members of SARS as such um, and therefore the people database uh, is much more flexible than the users but there should only be one profile for a user uh, created on SARS. Right. To look at your profile or create one uh, if you don't see anything under profile page and simply click on create profile and fill in the, the information and uh, automatically links to your username um, pick all the relevant fields out upload a photo of yourself perhaps and click save. Okay, go back. I'm going to look at the demo account so you can see the demo user and it's been flagged with various group tags and this con uh, controls the way this account is filtered in SARS. So for instance this won't appear as a case officer uh, for selection in fields and our admin section which you don't see as, a, as an applicant. Okay, right. Um, we've tried as best possible to suppress the linking of fields throughout the system to your profile page or your uh, username. Uh, if you do spot uh, links that are still available in parts of the site, please report those um, as we are still very much in development and we are trying our best to maintain the privacy of our applicants and users to a point um, where people might be able to know who's ap applying but we don't necessarily want to give away your phone number or address and so on. Okay, let's go back to the dashboard and let's go to create. Now there are two options under create. Um, one is the root create which takes you to the content overview page and it looks like this. This shows you all content that you have rights to and you can click on add content and that will show you all the options of content types on SARS which you are allowed to create um, and edit. The these fields are, I'm showing you these fields because down the line as you're more familiar with SARS you will be able to use these to directly create uh, content um, outside of the case process um, which might be invoked in a case or um, a site recording process and so on um, but uh, these will, will only make more sense um, once you are more familiar with SARS. For now simply click create case application Okay, this takes you into the case content type. A case can be many things. It can be a permit application, it can be a development application, uh, it could be a nomination of a site, um, it can be a case just about, about a site and management issues with the site or an object collection. Um, and uh, if it is a development, it might have multiple subtypes. Your first step is to pick your relevant heritage authority that you're dealing with and that might be SARA at this stage but it might be other authorities as well so if we're in Gauteng and we wanted the local provincial heritage authority to 
comment or deal with the case as well, we would be able to click on Gauteng and the Gauteng PRA. At this stage in August, um, we are quite close to f finalizing our arrangements with um, two PRAs in South Africa, um, and the other PRAs will be uh, logging on to Cyrus during the course of the next year. Um, eventually, SARA, where applicable, will be commenting on applications in addition to the PRAs, as has been happening up to now, um, and over time as each uh, pr province gains competency in the full array of functions such as archaeology and paleontology, those functions will be dealt with only by the PRAs as, as it is with Heritage Western Cape in the Western Cape or AMAFA in KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, in the future there will also be local municipalities such as the city of Cape Town with heritage departments and they will also be logging on to Cyrus to deal with applications. Alright, let's keep it simple for now. The, the reason for multiple authorities is that if you had a project covering multiple provinces or multiple authorities, you could simply create one case on SARS and those various authorities can log on to the same case without creating any additional work and they would be able to process their decisions and permits uh, on the same case. And So the applicant would have one, a one-stop shop for tracking all, the, all of the relevant authorities dealing with the heritage aspects of the case. The case type, let's make this a comment. Um, this would be typical of EIAs or mining applications where SARA, for instance, is only a commentary body for the case. But in other instances, it might trigger Section 38.1 of the National Heritage Resources Act. And there, in those cases, SARA would be the decision maker. Uh, for other types, you would typically deal with permits uh, for alterations or demolitions or uh, excavations for instance on archaeological sites or declared sites. Um, the last three are not often used by members of the public as at the applicant but sometimes someone might uh, nominate a site for declaration and could create a case on SARS for that purpose. The other two are generally used by case officers for case management purposes. Section, let's make this a Section 38.8 case. Okay, so we pretend this is an EIA for a wind farm and we'll attach electrical infrastructure to the case as well. So since it is a development, there's instructions on each section. We'll define what kind of development this is. It's wind and electrical infrastructure. So let's tick the box. Okay. The next one is the terms and conditions which apply to this case please click yes and accept the terms and conditions. This specifies various in, um, standard information, the um, uh, terms and the way uh, that the documentation is submitted is available in terms of PIA and the um, information must be accurate and true and that you have the relevant permissions in place for this application to proceed. Um, please again consult with your case officer if you are confused or need for more information about these terms and conditions. Case reference. This is a, a friendly name uh, for the case and before we proceed with that let's stop the tutorial there and move on to, to chapter 3.